19 minutes after 7 o'clock, it's afternoon time in Ukraine where Joseph Lindsley is, and this is some music from Ukraine. Tell us about this, Joseph. Hey, Bob, good afternoon from Lviv. This is the band called Daka Braka, whose name means to give and to take. The song is called Kola Skova, and it means lullaby. And this band, uh, they, it's four women, uh, a quartet, and uh, they formed in 2009, and they became a great voice of Ukraine, especially in the 2014 Revolution of Dignity, when people throughout the country uh, tried to reclaim their culture and traditions that had been destroyed during Soviet times. Uh, and so this, th- their, this uh, band brings together uh, different traditions in, in Ukrainian folk life, and they also often they bring in French language and English language, never Russian, uh, but they mix the, um, some other languages with English. And in this song, uh, the words go, the silver moon's up in the sky, so close and so far, it's too high, it's too high. The time to love and the time to cry, the time to live and the time to die, the time to die. Let the light shine in the dark. Uh, obviously with many biblical references, but also referencing the folk songs that got people through dark times in the past uh, with with a good amount of joy. And so this is one of the most popular Ukrainian bands today. Uh, they've played everywhere from the Glastonbury Festival uh, to the New Orleans uh, Jazz Festival. Uh, so they, they, they've been great ambassadors of Ukrainian culture. And, you know, I was going uh, originally this morning, I was when I was running, I was listening to a song by another band uh, from Kharkiv. It's called Ya Soldat, and it has a lot of energy. It was written before uh, uh, February 24th, 2022, but after Russia invaded in 2014, when Ukraine had that revolution of dignity. And, uh, and, and it's about being a soldier, but the song contains uh, some words in the Russian language. And so I texted a friend uh, here, Maria, she's an artist, to get her opinion. I said, you know, what do you think of this, this song uh, from Kharkiv? And she said uh, when she was a student, she loved that song. They used to sing it all the time. I remember singing it with people here in the time of the pandemic. Uh, And then Maria writes, uh, but not now. She said, I can't hear anything in that language. Uh, It's just it's too painful uh, for Mm -hmm. so many people, even if they used to speak Russian uh, because of what has happened. Uh, They they really, you know, there's a there's a. I would say a, a deep uh, pain is probably the best word when they when, when many Ukrainians hear Russian spoken. Uh, yesterday, I met with a uh, soldier friend who's on a brief break here in Lviv, and he was a tech entrepreneur before uh, the big invasion, February 24th. And he was describing to me the first time when the Russians were firing toward him. He said, you know, it was beyond terrifying. Uh, you know, you're almost frozen in fear. And then he said, after that first time, the second time, you're already used to it. You just you just do your work and you fight back. Uh, it was just that, you know, so that as we've always hear, heard about that baptism of fire. Uh, and then at, uh, we were walking through as we we're having this conversation, walking through the main square uh, of Lviv and a stranger approached us who looked like a character out of a Ukrainian uh, novel by Gogol or a Russian novel by Dostoevsky. And the stranger asked for directions uh, in the center of Lviv, sort of unusual. And I didn't notice what language he was speaking. And my friend, the soldier, happily gave the stranger directions, and then the guy asked him for a cigarette. And so my friend gave him a cigarette, and then I heard the stranger say, Spasibo, uh, which is the Russian. It's obviously a very Russian word. I mean, it's, it's the word for thank you. In Ukrainian, the word is diakuyu. And so I asked because my friend in Ukrainian, I said, you know, w- was this guy speaking Russian? And I thought the, the guy had walked away from us, uh, but he could still hear me. And so the stranger got angry. And he said, no, Russian is a beautiful language, a beautiful culture. And then my friend, the soldier said, uh, can I please have my cigarette back? Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, he's been, you know, he's risking his life here. And uh, and the stranger said no and, and sort of stormed off. And and so you do see these tensions in, in little places. Uh, and because of that incident, uh, my friend, the soldier uh, said that when he was on the train coming back from the battlefield, from the trenches, uh, he was sharing a. Uh, a car, uh, it was an overnight train, and sharing a room, they have four beds, uh, a little coupe car, and uh, there was a, a woman, it was one of the fellow passengers, a, y- a young woman, and she saw my friend in uniform, and she said, how long is this going to go on? You know, very sad, obviously, and he said cheerfully to her in Ukrainian, she asked him that question in Russian, and how long will this go on? And my friend said cheerfully, you know, he said, we've got a long ways to go, but you can help little steps by trying to speak Ukrainian. And she said, why? Why, why does that matter? And, and he gave her three reasons. He said, you know, if you, if you speak Russian, 
you're using Russian content. You know, you're going to be consuming Russian media. Uh, you're just going to be naturally part of that universe. Uh, and the second thing is, you know, Russia has, you know, Putin made it his uh, part of his pretext for the invasion was that he was saving Russian speakers. Uh, the same pretext that uh, Hitler made when he was invading Poland uh, and Austria, uh, which, by the way, was pointed out in the story today by the former prime minister of Sweden uh, in the Kiev Independent. He said, let's remember that Hitler said, oh, there are people who speak German in Poland. We must get Poland back. Uh, Putin says the same thing about Ukraine. Uh, and so and then the third thing is simply as an act of solidarity. You know, if everyone is working together toward victory, uh, you know, everyone was schooled in the Ukrainian language, uh, you know, in, in elementary school. And so how hard is it to try to speak it? Uh, and so so you do uh, you, you, you see these conversations happening. I would say not there's no violent conflicts on it, but it is a, a big, uh, big problem and a big tension for many people. And the languages are very different. Uh, Ukrainian is more similar to Polish, but it does share some words in common uh, with Russian. And so just one small example of that, the, uh, of how they're not, of how different they are. In Russian, uh, and, and Putin uh, often uses this concept, uh, Sir, Sir he Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, when he's speaking in New York, uh, he's, they speak about the Russian peace and, and the Russian world. It's peace and world. It's the same word in Russian, same exact word, mir, M-I-R. Uh, and it's almost like an is, uh, the word Islam means submission. You know, they're totally, uh, th th those ideas are tied together. It's the same for peace and world. And so it has this sort of philosophy that the Russian peace is when it's a Russian world. Uh, and then in Ukrainian language, the, world, the word for world is svit. And then the, th that word svit is the root of the word for light. So svit lo means light and svit means world. So for Ukrainians, uh, very poetic culture, you know, with a lot of folk traditions, uh, then the, the word for world uh, come, uh, is, is, is completely tied to the word for light. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we even see in the language different ways of looking at the world. You make me think of my father, uh, Joseph, who is fluent in Russian. And I love your uh, slice of life stories, those, those small tales you tell, because it really puts in perspective the much larger issues and it reminds me of what Don Hewitt used to say, the executive producer and creator of 60 Minutes. If you want to tell a big story, he would say, a complicated story, just narrow it down and zoom in to one, one small uh, story of maybe one person going through something. And that, that tells a larger story. Before we let you go here, Joseph, just quickly, I know yesterday you kind of downplayed the meeting between the Chinese President Xi and uh, President Zelensky. But today there's a report from the Ukrainian prime minister who is saying that that conversation uh, was very, very fruitful and could open a new stage of cooperation between the two countries. What do you make of that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, you know, China could be a mitigating force on Russia. I mean, obviously, I mean, it's, you know, probably they have been already to, to a large degree. Uh, Beijing is very good. I mean, even at the comments that uh, Beijing has made at, at the United Nations this week, they're very, you know, they're, they're, they're definitely not clear, you know, on one side or the other. Uh, you have to look more closely to see where they stand. Uh, and so, but I, I do think uh, if you look at the history, especially of China under President Xi Jinping, uh, you, they, you, as this progresses, there will come a point where Ukraine will have to clearly make a decision. Do they stand uh, with Beijing against Taiwan. For example, when uh, uh, the nation of Honduras was one of the few countries uh, to recognize Taiwan, uh, 16 countries in the world uh, recognized Taiwan, uh, the whole world used to until the 1970s. And when Honduras uh, a few weeks ago decided to, reckon, uh, to decide with Beijing against Taiwan, uh, it wasn't enough to simply establish an embassy in Beijing. They had to issue a statement saying that Beijing had a right to Taiwan. Uh, and so th th this is what Beijing, th this is a requirement of cooperating fully with Beijing uh, that would undermine Ukrainians argument for for, for freedom, because it's exactly mm -hmm. the same story with Taiwan. Joseph Lindsley in Ukraine. Appreciate the reporting, as always. We'll talk tomorrow. Thank you. Oh, by the way, the city of Mykolaiv got absolutely pounded last night. So all that mm. stuff is still continuing. We'll hear about, yes, more to come on that. And our newscast is next after this. Thank you for introducing Ukraine on your social media pages. That's very important that much more people can get more information about the situation here and how everybody can help 
Ukraine to stay stronger and to save all the world. Что он сказал?